Hi everybody, Ricky here from Behind the Bars TV. Hope everyone's fit and well. And what I'm going to be talking about in this episode is does prison work and how does it work for you? So I'll start off by saying a prison definitely did work for me because it changed my mindset. But what I'm trying to teach people and teach the younger ones watching this as well, like why should you have to go to prison for to sort your life out? When you can do it out here, you've just got to have the willpower and the need to want to do it and want to have that better life. So when I went in and served just over five years or five years the first time, yeah, I was only 20 year old when I went in, had a young head on my shoulders, I yeah, had a different outlook on life then. All the, all the things that I wanted then, when I was younger and in my teenage years, leading up to getting uh, my IPP sentence. All the uh, sort of dreams and goals that I had in my head, not that I didn't even have any goals to be honest, but what I had in my head was, I wanted to be the biggest, the baddest, you wanted a name, you wanted a reputation in your area, you wanted people to be scared of you, be feared of you, you wanted that reputation. So that was the mindset I was in. It's from a young age, I've uh, grew up around violence, and that's all we seem to know when we were growing up was violence. If you had any problems or had any issues with people, the way to solve it was through violence, and that's how I was brought up. So obviously, I was destined to end up where I ended up. But when I went inside, I changed my mindset. It took us a few years when I first went in, not until I got up, I'd say about 23, 24, when I'd been in about three years, when my mindset started changing and I started thinking about what I wanted in the future. And my future no longer was prison. Obviously, I'd spent a few years and at this point, I didn't want to be in there no longer. Obviously, you want to be out. Even though the mindset I was in that landed as in prison, I wasn't even asked that I was in prison. I got on with me time. I did actually, in a bit of a sinister way, enjoyed me time whilst I was in there. But that, for the reason why I enjoyed it, was because it sorted us out. It done what it's supposed to do. And I will say, 90% of the time, it actually doesn't work for people because most of them's been in and out continuously all their lives and they know no different. But I suppose a lot of them don't. They don't want a better life, they enjoy doing what they're doing. But you will get that small percent, which I would say about 10%, that want to better their lives and have a better future and create something good with their lives. And uh, obviously that's what I did do. But um, what I was wanting to get across and tell the young'uns, or anybody who's going down the wrong path, and they're thinking about prison or they're going to end up in prison by the actions and the way that the lifestyle is leading. Just have a good long think about what you want in the future. Don't get out of living in that here and now moment where you don't give a, a shit and you're just in that crazy mindset. <clears throat> Try and get out of that mindset now before you get to prison. If you can do prison, if you can go in there and do your sentence, which a lot of the lads can, and lasses, you just can all get in there. Jail doesn't bother you, you crack on, you get on with your sentence, you're living by yourself or you're padded up with somebody else. If you can do it in there and change your mindset and be a bit better, why can't you do it out here? Lock your cell in your house, get your essentials, what you need, do what you've got to do if you go to work, whatever, or if you don't, get yourself in the house, forget about everybody else outside, apart from obviously your loved ones, and just... Try and create that better life, that, that better version of you. Keep yourself locked away from everybody else. Keep off the sessions and just think about what you want. Have a good, long, hard look at your life on a straight head. Do this whilst you're not intoxicated. Do this while you're free of all substances. And then you'll see things in a better light and think about what you want for your future. Like I say, why have to suffer by being in prison 
eating prison food, which is absolute dog crap. Living with someone like you don't even know, you don't even like. Having to share cells with people. Why put yourself through all that trauma and headache when you can do it now? Do it out here. And you might lose people along the way. People might not like the new you. The people that you used to be friends with or associate or people you used to go out drinking with. If you're not long, no longer doing that or no longer committing crimes or getting into bother. There, your old associates might dwindle off. They might not want nothing to do with you no more. But you're in a new chapter of your life. That doesn't matter. If you're, if you're doing things to please other people and it's making you unhappy, then where is the logic in that? It's all about you and you being happy. So that is what you need to remember as well. It's about your happiness. Why do something for some, somebody else that makes them happy but it causes you to be unhappy. Everything you do now has got to be about yourself. You've got to get yourself right first before you create that better future for yourself. Because if you don't, you're just going to go on pleasing other people and suffering yourself and ended up in prison, ended up in bad situations. You've got to do what's good for you. If you're happy, that is, it's priceless. Because I've went through a lot of years of alcohol abuse and drug abuse before I got the IPP sentence. And you think you're happy when you're off your tits or pissed because you're in a different world, you're not thinking straight. But when you come out of all that and you get rid of all the negative stuff in your life and you start feeling better, believe you me, you can't put a price on that. I wake up now on a morning and I've just got so many good thoughts running through me head, positive things. Because I'm non-stop, I'm busy all the time. My day is just filled from morning till night. Um, and I'm actually helping a lot of people along the way. People are coming to me for advice. Yeah, I've got my mental health group, what I run in the gym. It's, uh, to, this is a mental health group that I run for men over the age of 18 that are suffering in silence and they need someone to talk to. There's a group of us all sitting there, like-minded lads, helping each other. And this is something I do in my spare time after I finish working in the gym. I've set this group up and it's free of charge and I give lads free access to the gym after the group. And things like that along my journey now when I'm helping other people is what makes me feel good. Like you won't believe it when you t turn that corner and you feel a better person and you're on a straight head. Fresh feeling fresh all the time, happy all the time, and you're helping people along the way that need your help, which otherwise would be suffering silence if you weren't on your journey and helping them. Like, it's amazing what happens when you turn your thoughts into positive and uh, everything good comes to you. It's crazy. But um, like I say, getting back to the prison, you shouldn't have to get to that point in your life where you're stuck in prison and sometimes if you're just in for a, a few months at a time it's not going to work or if you're at home and you're trying it for a few months it's got to be a, for a long period of time because I done a I done six month remand just before I got my IPP and I got I got out um, from Durham prison where I got GSCs, which is Judge and Chambers, which is like, uh, it's a bit like getting bail. So I got I got out from Durham Prison, and I got out on a Friday afternoon, and I was 21 year old, still in that mindset. Um, I've never really mentioned this before when I've done my podcast. I've never, I've always spoke about when I was in Durham Prison, but I never mentioned when I actually got out and went back in. So I got out, and another trial was set. The reason why I got released was because the trial that was meant to go ahead, the main witness didn't turn up. Um, and I'd already been in prison at six months at this point, so they had to give us, they had to release us on GSC's Judge and Chambers. <clears throat> so, my trial day got set for two months' time after this, and it was a Friday afternoon when I got out. And what did I do? It's one of me, well, a couple of the lads picked us up. We went back to uh, one of the bars, went back to the local bar, straight on the pints, straight on the session, uh, up all night into the Saturday. 
about a week later after that, I went down to Creamfields. Prodigy was headlining at the time, and uh, I remember that, just off my heads all weekend. Um, and I just carried on doing that for like eight weeks, leading up to me trial. Even a couple of days before me trial, I was still on a session. Me trial was on a Wednesday, I remember. And I've been drinking Friday or Saturday into the Sunday and whatever else to keep us going. And I went for the trial on Wednesday, got found guilty. And that's when I got IPP, straight back into Durham. But the next, after the, in this stint, I'd done just on, I'd done five years. Yeah, I got out when I was 25 year old. But in them years, getting back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, after the three year point, that's when I started thinking what I wanted in the future. And that's when my mindset started changing all that negative into positive was beginning to happen. And I was thinking about good things I wanted in the future. But um, it took that amount of prison. It did work for me. But if I got released again after maybe a year, it, it probably wouldn't have worked. When I got the sentence, it done what it was meant to do. It changed us. Yeah, and obviously I got out when I was 25. Kept me head, kept me head right when I got out. Set me own business up and everything. Still in that positive mindset. Carried on going to the gym. And just created the best future for myself. Got married, had four kids, had businesses, had everything a man would ever want and dream of. Doing well for myself. But I had some tragedies along the way, suffering suicides and found my best friend. If a lot of you have been watching my channels, yeah, my channel, sorry, and watching my, yeah, my podcasts that I've done, I've done about six podcasts with different ones. Um, Paul Stansby, Billy Moore, Danny Christie, Sean Atwood, yeah, my pal James Roberts, Roberts, um, Robertson, sorry. <clears throat> and, um, Steve Wraith, I'd done one with him. He was the first one I'd done. So that was about six podcasts that I'd done. So I've spoke about it on there. But if you haven't seen it and you're new to my channel, I suffered some suicides. My best friend committed suicide. And I actually found him hanging. Had to cut him down, try and give him mouth to mouth, try and bring him back. And I couldn't. Um, and I suffered another two suicides after that. My wife's auntie and my other friend, Ross. And my mindset started slipping again. All the negative stuff was coming back. I was in a bad place. I was drinking heavily. Um, and I was back in a shitty place. And I ended up back in prison. Ten years. I've nearly been out of prison. I've been free for ten years nearly. And I ended up back in. This time I spent another 14 months back in prison. That was for a car offence. I bought a stolen car and ended up crashing it when I was pissed. Ran off six months later, came back, my DNA was on the airbag. And I was on my way to work again in my recovery truck. Had me By this point, I was buying and selling cars, doing really well for myself. And uh, got pulled off the road, driving along, looking behind us, and I've just seen loads of busy cars come in, boxes in, or oh, 10 busy cars. Put us in the back of the ride van, said, oh, you wanted for recall back to prison. And it was to do with the car offence, my DNA was on the airbag. So I ends up, didn't even see the inside of a courtroom, just got drove down to Durham Police Station, chucked on a paddy wagon, drove through the gates of Durham, back in the prison I was in 10 years previously. Doom and gloom, depressing as fuck, mental health issues just going wild, anxiety and depression was just kicking me teeth in, and it was absolutely fucking horrible. Obviously this time I had fucking a wife, four kids, had my own businesses, now... I'm stuck in there, in the depth of despair, stuck in a shitty old Victorian castle lookalike thing, which is Durham Prison. And the mindset I was in now was totally different to what I was in back then. I didn't want to go to prison this time, but obviously I felt as if I'd been kidnapped and held hostage. That was, that was how I was feeling, but I was still in that negative mindset, blaming everybody else, blaming the police, blaming probation. And yeah... Uh, Again, it took us a X amount of months. It was six months. It took us to feel different again. It, for, for a full six months in prison, I was in a negative mindset, angry again, pissed off, raging, and yeah, uh, 
Like I see I was blaming probation, thinking this was on Josh, I shouldn't have recalled us. Could have at least arrested us, interviewed us then. See what happened from there. They didn't even get my side of the story. They just went, right, recall them. But obviously at the time, the police wanted us off the streets. They kept getting in touch with probation, telling them things, saying they'd heard information on us, uh, saying they had police intelligence on us, out of supplying drugs in the local area, which was all false. It was just what was all made up. But obviously this is ultimately what landed me back in prison. Uh, and it took six months, like I said, to re to sort me head out again. For the first six months, it was, wasn't until I said to myself and looked at myself and see my wife and kids suffering back home and I thought, this is all my fault. They're at home suffering without the dad, without the husband. I'm in here in a cell all by myself, all lonely, suffering. And whose fault is it? Mine. It was my fault. So that's what I done. I took it on board, took responsibility for my own actions. And then the positive just started coming back. And all of a sudden, just felt like that. I just felt like a whole new, different person. I didn't. I let go of all the negative stuff again that was dragging us down. Felt like I had a 20 kilo, but not a 100 kilo weight on me back, pulling us down. A big bag of a big bag of negative shit just dragging us down backwards and I was just carrying it along. This is how I'm describing it. Dragging along, carrying this big bag of negativity negativity. <laughs> I think I said that right. Bit of a tongue twist of that. But um dragging this big bag along and it just felt as if I just went like that, cut the bag, and it just fell off me back and I just went, whoa, whole different person again. I'm floating along. Fit as a fiddle, getting all the lads fit on the yard, and all the fucking good thoughts were flowing through me brain, and I just felt, felt amazing. Even though I was locked in prison, I knew I was getting out. I knew I had a parole here and coming up, and I knew they couldn't keep us in. Spent 14 months in prison, off a, I got an eight, eight month sentence for the car, so if I didn't have IPP, I probably in the likelihood would have gotten a suspended sentence. Or, <clears throat> I would have only served four months, or not even that, maybe it's 12 weeks. But I ended up serving 14 months because of this sentence. But like I say, I knew I was getting out, and I knew the parole board weren't going to hold us back and keep us in. Not when I had everything outside waiting for us, and I was in for a car offence. My original sentence was for violence, but there's been no violence. So, I went up for my parole here, and, and I got released. But obviously, in the meantime, I'd wrote my book, Behind the Bars Ruthless Fitness. And it was all about physical and mental fitness training. And I got myself in such a good mindset whilst I was in there. Came out and carried it on. But this is what the aim of this video is to get across to people. Why should you have to go and suffer in jail to sort yourself out? I could have done that. I mean, if I didn't get in that negative mindset, none of the things would have happened. I wouldn't have been drinking heavily. I wouldn't have gotten, I wouldn't have bought the car. I wouldn't have done what I'd done. And that was all because of my negative mindset. But if I'd changed that before any of this had happened, I wouldn't have landed back in prison. But things happen for a reason. I'm sitting here now, the happiest I've ever been. And that's because I went to prison. So prison actually did work for me. But I don't want you to have to go to prison for you to change your life. I'm trying to educate you to, to sort yourself out now. Sort your life out, sort your mind out, and create that better life for yourself without having to end up in prison. But hopefully this video will have gotten through to some of you people. You'll be sitting there thinking, wow, he's talking absolute sense here. Give it a try, see if it works for you. But um, if you're liking me content, people, Please do like it and subscribe because I've got a lot of things lined up. Once I get to that 10k subscriber mark, I'm getting me uh, just trying to sort a little studio out. I'm going to start doing interviews, interviewing ex prisoners and people with motivational stories just, to, just for a bit more entertainment for me viewers. But uh, thanks for watching, people. Take care.